11, 11, 11. Healing Soul Wounds of Our Nation's Warriors, 10 Veterans Days Since 9-11 by Quinn Elizabeth. I am the only daughter of a two-tour combat veteran of the Vietnam War, although I did not know this while growing up. I remember thinking that my father sailed around the ocean while in the Navy before I was born. He never spoke of his experiences in the military, and as a girl, I never thought to ask. As an adult, I now see that not asking and not talking does not mean that there is nothing to say. In any culture, there are two types of warriors. There are some men and women who are called to be professional warriors. Let's call them career warriors. My book, Except in the Ashes, A Daughter's Look at Post-Traumatic Stress, is written for and about term warriors. Individuals called to duty for a time or a reason, and then they go back to civilian life as soon as they have served their country. The ultimate problem is, participating in war causes trauma for almost every person involved, and this trauma doesn't just go away once their service has ended. I was born nine months after my father came home from his second tour of duty in Vietnam. My father was a good man, but as I grew up, he mysteriously fell apart before the eyes of his family. I had always known him as a drinker, but until I was in my early thirties, when I had an opportunity to reconnect with him as an adult woman, I never had a clue as to why. Only after his accidental death in 2004 did I get to see into his world. By reading his letters and VA records, I learned how he had tried to ignore the fact that his experiences in war decades earlier haunted him every day of his life, and how his reaction to those experiences affected everyone around him. It is important to say that each person is unique, based on their personality, circumstance, and support system. So how a person reacts after experiencing any kind of trauma is as individual as he or she is. But even if a person handles it well, the bottom line is that trauma does affect everyone, and no warrior is ever the same after war. If there is one thing our culture knows, it is trauma. In addition to war, trauma can be caused by childhood experiences, rape, or violent assault. Whether it happens chronically or in a wrong time, wrong place scenario, we are a people with many generational layers of untended trauma. I have come to feel that a deep root of this societal problem is war. In war, the strategy is to do horrible things to other people so that they do what you want or you get what you want. This is rarely the stated intent, and the specific reason for war is always slightly different but the result is the same. Traumatic experiences are in every part of war, scarring those who are on the receiving end, as well as those who have to carry out such acts. And when warriors are released from their service, they bring their trauma home. In our culture's recent past, there have been many names for describing the change that occurs in a person, most often men, after coming home from war. Some are soldier's heart, battle fatigue, and shell shock. After so many who served in the Vietnam War came home with such symptoms, people began admitting in public that painful after effects were quite common, and so they gave it a name, post-traumatic stress disorder. My father tried his best to hold his life together, and he did for the most part, until I was in my early teens. After my mother asked him for a divorce, he tried to move on. He created a new family and focused on climbing the economic ladder of prestige. These things could not outweigh his heavy heart, however, and his life fell apart. At its worst, he bordered on homelessness and suicide. The saddest part to me, looking back, is that my father was convinced that he must have been weak to be depressed, to let down his children again and again, and to continually want to self-medicate with alcohol. So our family's elephant in the room was never acknowledged. Since everyone is different, there is no formula for how a war veteran will be affected. But as a culture, we must finally admit that if we send someone to war, that means we tell him or her to do and see horrible things. They will be affected, and that is our personal and national business. 
In the latest printing of my book in 2007, I included a note about the D in PTSD. I have come to understand that to experience emotional and mental after-effects from experiencing trauma is to be human. It is normal, and we need to treat it that way. More mental health practitioners are dropping the disorder in PTSD. Another way to describe it, as Dr. Edward Tick describes it in his book, War and the Soul, is post-traumatic soul distress. Many cultures around the planet have had ancient and specific ways to tend and cleanse warriors after returning home from battle. For thousands of years, there have been community and cultural rituals and processes that help warriors come to terms with deeds done in battle and to purify their mind, body, and spirit so they can return to civilian society. This careful re-entry is important because untended war energy is not good for anyone in any culture that values living peacefully. However, it seems that in recent American culture, we have disowned this important step in tending the hearts and minds of those we send to war in our name. There is a statement often said, which is, we are over there so the war doesn't come over here. Hearing this saddens me, because no matter the reasons or locations of the war at the moment, it is always brought to the most important and fragile place in any society, home. Even for warriors of the greatest generation who fought the last wholeheartedly justified war, if you scratched just under the surface of many World War II veterans, there was sadness, fear, anger, and tears, even in those tough men who knew hard times. If you ask their loved ones, who are probably your loved ones, there are many stories of stoic men, whispers of trauma, and outbursts of rage. I have learned one very important thing from living my father's story of war. Strong men and women react to trauma just like everybody else. We must admit it, talk about it, demand the resources to deal with it so that we don't pass post-traumatic stress onto another generation without them even understanding what they have inherited. The pain that our veterans feel in their minds and hearts is real, and it is the business of every American. It is time that we demand the right for them to heal the pain that they sustained for us. If one of our warriors sustained a physical wound that was left to fester, and then they were sent home to their community, what would we do? When we saw him with his obviously painful and life-threatening wound, would we ignore it and say, get over it, you're making me uncomfortable, or just wait, it'll get better with time? I doubt it. I imagine that anyone who saw someone with such a weeping, infected physical wound would insist that they immediately go to a hospital to get treated. Inner wounds of the mind and heart are just as dangerous as any physical wound. Inner wounds cause families to break apart and our veterans to implode, or even end their own life to make the pain end. It is time, as the 10th Veterans Day since 9-11-2001 comes near, for our nation to admit that our veterans' emotional and mental wounds have been left to fester in front of us, and the only way to heal this collective pain is for all of us to decide that it is important to our nation to heal wounded souls as well as broken bodies. In 2004, I wrote, I would imagine that just about everyone has some unresolved issues with their father, veteran or not. So I feel blessed to have watched my father in his older years, learning to understand how a phase in his young life fundamentally damaged him and those around him, even though he didn't want to admit it. In his last few years, I got to know him as a man, and I realized the burden he was carrying alone, without really knowing that he was carrying something. While I feel resolved with my father, I feel an immense sadness about how things turned out. I wonder, what if things were different? What if the culture supported, even insisted on, my father's healing, and all the others like him? So many what-ifs. So now he is gone. But there are many more men, and now women like him, who are in a faraway land telling themselves that everything will be all right when they get home. Once home, they do the best they can to get on with life. But what happens when the memories don't go away? What then? What about the wives and the parents and the children who don't know what to do with the intense feelings being displayed? 
How do we all deal with our loved ones as they come to terms with killing other human beings for our society? This is why I write to you. My father is one version of the future of your soldier, your loved one, your neighbor or client, or you, 30 years from now. Your soldier is my father. I am your daughter. We are all in this together. It is time, fellow Americans, to acknowledge the wounds to the soul that war always causes. We are all touched by it, and for generations we have pretended that it doesn't exist. Ten Veterans Days ago, our nation had just experienced a horrible wound to our collective soul. In response to what happened on 9-11 in 2001, American men and women were sent to fight in Operation Iraqi Freedom, and America still has servicemen and women fighting in Operation Enduring Freedom. We are trying to win a war to heal our soul. Whether we win the hearts and minds of our enemies, we must be careful to tend the hearts and minds of our warriors as they return from the fight. We cannot afford the highest cost. Another generation of warriors permanently crippled by festering wounds of the soul, simply because we are reluctant to admit that their pain is the wounded elephant in the living room of America. The next generation of American families depends on us to decide to see the wounds standing in front of us and within us, and then be brave enough to help our nation's warriors heal the pain that cannot be healed alone. To find out more about Quinn Elizabeth's book, Accepting the Ashes, A Daughter's Look at PTSD, in paper, ebook, and audiobook, go to acceptingtheashes.net.